Right, so we have finally got the boss out on the bag. <laughs> and what we're going to talk about is we're going to have a little chat about our new Wagners that we've just brought out, which has been a, a product we've been working on for, what, probably two years, nearly? That's it, yeah, just, just over two years now. It is, it, it's, it's something that myself and Sean do a lot of this style of fishing, or for me, it's been my obsession for ever since getting tuned up by Andy Power a couple of years ago at Fish Show, and that's where the evolution of this product began. We were after a Waggler that, that fixed all the issues, weren't we, that the Wagglers that were available at the time were causing us. I think... The key thing that we, we sort of like started with this project was how can we create something that is, is more durable. The, the hardest thing with this project, and I'm not going to lie, this, this project has been a nightmare. Horrible. I mean, it's been in development for two years, which isn't unusual for a, pro no. for a project. No. But it's been the sheer amount of samples that we've gone through. Mm -hmm. And it's prob I've probably learned more from this project than any other project that I've ever done yeah. in terms of material use in terms of COG which is center of gravity and how that affects the waggler and how the flights affect the waggler and how these small changes that to be fair you are a perfectionist I'm fussy as I a nightmare <laughs> that's what you are in a good way in a good way yes. but that those small twi ch like tweaks and changes throughout the project all combined to make what you've got in your hand now. It really. was, wasn't it? It's amazing the one percent differences, the difference, the how they affected the float in various ways, landing, casting, whatever. The horrible things float, aren't they? I've got a lot of respect for a lot of float makers after this. It's a pain, isn't it? It's it's difficult, especially when you're trying to use a new material. Yeah. Um, you, there's there's materials out there on the market that have been used to produce floats for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. The major issues that that you raised with these was was durability but also the fact that they they change so much in their densities yeah the balsa isn't it was the yes the the main the first point of call wasn't it was to play with balsa yeah and the inconsistency was a nightmare and it's it was quite fragile wasn't it in many many cases very very fragile Which, and, and difficult to of. source good so, balsa as well so about that first that's what i want to chat about yes this is new to me this is new to fishing game pretty much isn't it definitely match fishing definitely game. match fishing yes what was it? What's it all about? What's so, the material? So the material that we've used for the actual bodies is basically an aerated PP, so polypropylene. Um, the reason behind doing this is that when you, or the easiest way to describe it is imagine an aero bar and you, you break an aero bar in half and you've got loads of little bubbles inside. Mm. Now it's no different with this, with this material that we've used, but the bubbles are microscopic mm -hmm. and basically it makes the, the actual plastic lighter and more buoyant well when you're making a float you basically want the lightest and most buoyant material that you can get definitely that was hard wasn't it was creating a material that was light enough that wouldn't take over the weight that is being incorporated into the bottom the, the, the weight at the bottom always needs to to lead it needs to boss the float the, it was yeah. tricky wasn't it to get a material that allowed you to do that exactly the more the more weight you can have at the base of the float and the less weight trailing behind mm -hmm. the more accurate the float will fly yes. um, one of the key things that we found was was the wall thickness and i think this is the thing that we went back and forth on a, a, for a long time because originally the wall thickness of the plastic was quite thick yeah. and it did affect the flight of the wagglers and we kept reducing it and reducing it and reducing it mm -hmm. to the point where we actually went too far and they were too soft and then it was a case of going back again so that we kept the strength yes but had basically the thinnest wall that we possibly could with this material it is and it, the difference it makes the how abusive you can be with these wagglers with this material it's a joke i could genuinely i could take that and run over it with my car and still <laughs> use it it's a joke isn't it no it's crazy it, it's so weird I, when i first saw it i thought no i'm not liking them they're never ever going to break literally they're no. never ever going to break either it's a pretty much i couldn't even snap them in my hand if i tried it unless you got a saw yeah you cut them in half obviously <laughs> but for for durability of a float which for, for particularly with the first range that we brought out the first range of floats are uh, they're marked as a bigger water. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? More aggressive style like of fishing. what we've got behind us today. Exactly this sort of like big, angry open waters, Barston, Boddington, all yeah. them sorts of things. So they're going to take a hell of a lot of, of whacking about with Abuse. thick lines. Do you know I mean? Positive fishing style of wagglers. There's a lot more in the pipeline, but we won't touch on that just yet. But that's what we were aiming at. I tell you, something else I want to touch on was, for me, I've played with wagglers for a lot in the last few months. And I never... I don't know whether believe's the right word, but never felt that incorporating flights mm. made a huge difference. I mean, I just thought it was that looks posh. Yeah. Oh my God, wasn't it? 
We, yeah. we started, did we start flush? Did we start with none? So, no, we started with two mil flights. Yeah. Um, very, very small. No, tiny almost, ones, wasn't literally, it? like, you could hardly see them. Yeah. Um, and to be fair, we had that many variations on these. We actually, we didn't tool. We, we actually RP'd them. Mm -hmm. we, we, have, um, we have some RP machines at work. Um, and the fastest way and most efficient way of doing it was to print off, I think I printed, we literally printed about 10 different versions. We did. Each one had a one millimeter increment change in terms of the size of the flight. And it was incredible, wasn't it, to oh, see the difference? It did my head in. Let's see, <laughs> you, you could go from one float that cast like a bag of spuds to swapping up for one percent, oh no, 10% increase, wasn't yep. it? Or 1%, in, tiny little increase. And all of a sudden you've got a dart that goes beautifully, but it was finding the happy medium, wasn't it? We don't want something that looks stupid. No. Ultimately what it is, it's a simple product, isn't it? Yep. That we wanted to just make right to fix all them problems of broken floats, floats sitting up and sitting down and, and not sitting right every cast consistently. Yep. I mean, that's gone. The range is nice and simple and does the job perfectly, doesn't it? It's exactly what we wanted a pallet waggler to do. Yeah, and obviously one small little detail as well that we'll just touch on quickly is the is the brass weight within the base. So they're all loaded, they're all tested as well. So each one's tested by our manufacturer to make sure that it cocks within a tolerance. So it, the the basically it sits to the bottom of the of the orange cap. There's a tolerance provided, so each one sits in that position. But also the shape of the brass part now. I don't know whether you want to talk about this, this Jamie, and the reasoning behind why we've done it. Yeah, we'll go into that in a bit more depth. We're going to do a little fishing video. Yeah. Then I'm going to talk about the little sexy things, if you like, <laughs> that make them as good as what they are. The reason that these wagglers, for me, for using the right situation, yeah. are as good as they can possibly be. That, that was Brilliant. the key thing with this product, to make it the perfect pilot waggler for fussy anglers like me. So hopefully that's a little bit of the, the story that's been involved in developing these products. Like I say, there's so much has gone into it and for all of us it's been a massive, massive learning curve in learning just how to create the, the best float that we possibly can and who knows where it'll lead in the future. But for now, so these are our offering to the pellet waggler world and I definitely believe they're as good as we could possibly get.